I'm going to turn this into this in 27 minutes or less. Will I finish in time? Or will I have to hit the turbo button? You can create along with me or just relax and watch. I'm Gina Murrow, the 27 minute artist. Meet Glenn, an endangered one-horned rhino who makes his home at the Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle. You can find the supply list in the show notes below, or you can go to my website, 27minuteartist.com, and order the supply list directly from there. Now, come on, let's charge down to the studio and start scribbling. If you can draw a rectangle, you could make this rhino. Let's start with a middle tone color, just so you can see it on the screen and then you will know roughly what we're... You can use a lighter color if you want. So his head is like one piece of Lego and his shoulders are like two Legos together. So we're gonna put roughly those two Legos, right? And then the Lego head is actually down a little bit like that. It's a, it may be a little longer maybe. There we go. Right? And his horn is right here. So I just keep my movements really loose. I'm drawing from my shoulder and that gives me enough room to make the motions that can look like his ear is a teardrop roughly. And then this one kind of looks like a sea anemone off in the distance. There we go. Now we want to make sure we get this beefy jaw big enough. And they're kind of circular here. And he has a frown. The rhinos are not happy. This done. So right now I'm just roughing in where I think I want these shapes and I'm looking for shapes. I'm not drawing his mouth. I'm drawing a triangle shadow that's right here. And there's another triangle roughly here. His eye is to the left of the horn, but above the nostril. And it's kind of circular. We'll come back and do more there. Okay. Now go ahead and step back. Okay. He's got, this is the hardest part right here, is, um, these folds. So we'll start with the middle fold. It kind of comes in. It's, it's folded up like phyllo dough. And this comes down and becomes part of the wrinkle of that other fold. Now, between this fold and this fold is some shadow. So we're just going to lightly shadow it and make the shape of that shadow. It's this, this shape. Hard to see, isn't it? Okay. And then this is where his jaw comes down. And there's another shape right here. And this is shadowed. You always want to step back so you can see if, if the perception is about right. I did an earlier rhino and his head came out too small because I didn't step back. But at this stage, you can make scribbly marks, they can crisscross, they can be outside of the shape that you're going to end up with. Because that's, that's, it's okay at this stage. We're going to cover it up a lot. And the style we're doing today is really a bit impressionistic. You could go slower and be more precise, but you'll be frustrated. And the point of this exercise is to practice value and color and have fun. 
So don't get too wrapped up about being perfect on this one. Now last time I made his leg too long too, too big, too fat. He had fat legs. So I see that the front of his leg is actually way behind the ear. It's back here. And because we're not drawing much back over here, we're not doing that part of the rhino, I'm just gonna make this a little sketchy. Cut that off. And then, then this part, coming down from this ripple here, comes up, makes a point like an arrow, comes out, and that goes up like that. And then there's darkness here, shadow, shadow shape there, shadow shape here, shadow. Okay. Now I have him, I have the proportions kind of where I want them. So I'm going to put my medium one down. I'll pick up green. It's still a medium color, but we're just going to use it to kind of fill in some of the spots that we would normally use for gray, but we're gonna make ours a little bit more colorful just to make it more interesting. If you get the values right, you can use any color. You could make this um, a red, pink, and orange rhino, and it would still work. Now I know there's uh, bumps over here. They almost look like warts, <laughs> but they're not, they're big. It's just part of the shielding on the rhino and so we'll come back and get to those in just a minute um, i'm just trying to give some body to the uh, protective covering of this rhino i'm avoiding this area up here because i want to save that for the bright white light stuff but this part of the ear comes down and there's a little bit of Still shadowed, but lighter than this part, part of his ear there. And so we're going to use this green as one of our lightest darks. Now I see a shadow that looks a little like an ice cream cone here. It's up from that one. And on this kind of drawing, you're not worried about whether that's his cranial lobe or, um, or whatever it is. We're just doing shapes and we're going to make this side of the ear candy cane marks so that it will look like it's curving over and there's a little bit of darkness there there's a little bit of shadow here on the back side of his horn and he's definitely got a shadow here so i'll be a little darker there okay Now, right now, I'm not including every shadow shape. I'm just doing the major ones. I get that. This is a pretty major one. So I'm going to get this Christmas tree shaped shadow in there. And then this part of his, his cheek has that. Do again, doing the little half, half moon marks. It gets quite a bit darker over here. So rather than doing a lot of green, I'm going to Come back and do something a little different. I decided I would use the green as kind of a middle of the road, the gray more or less, the filling in color. And I don't think the rhino will end up looking green in the end. He's not going to look ill, I promise. Again, round half marks to indicate roundness. Step back, check it out. Yeah, not too bad. Now, let's add some this a little bit of sunshine. This is orange, and I'm, I'm just going to put it in some of the brighter spots. Not, not the brightest, but the warmer where the light afternoon sun is hitting him. 
This was a rhino at the Woodland Zoo in Seattle, and I had an eight hour layover. So I took the city bus from the airport and rode down to the, to the uh, zoo and had all day to do nothing but draw pictures and stop and see whatever animal I wanted. I loved it. it was, I had a blast. And because I was by myself, um, nobody could say, ah, oh, come on, you're not gonna draw again. No, my family's very patient, but um, it isn't fair to make them wait every time I want to draw an animal. So sometimes I go to the zoo by myself. Okay, now there is definitely some lighting on that and a little bit at the top of it. You want to connect your shadow shapes and your light shapes as much as you can. Not necessarily the other, but rather than just having a shadow here and a shadow here, you try to make a dark shape that fills in all of it. Now this part sticks out, and so does this part a little bit. Okay, that helps that define a little bit. I'm not going to put it here because that should actually be dark, but there is some right here. And definitely some up in this saddle area and along his back. Now rather than just draw a line, I'm going to do a, a back and forth marks to make a, a bigger, wider line. Uh, I don't want too much there. Do I need any down here? Just a little, just a little. And there's not really much here, so I'll put something else down there. He does have a bit of a cheekbone right here that has some markings on the top and the top of his eyelid. And then this space almost looks like a, I don't know how to call these shapes. I can just see them. I can't always tell you the names. I didn't take geometry in school. I wasn't going to be a doctor, so they said I didn't need it. I did need it, but oh well. Be that as it may. Okay, it's looking good. So now I step back, get a bit of a view. I could put a little bit of orange there. Okay, now we're going to take... This is salmon. You don't have to use it. You could use pink instead, but I'm going to just kind of soften the, the orange wherever it's uh, just coming out of the sun, just to kind of add some interest. I have another plan for the part of the skin that is really in the sun. Um, so this is Still a similar value to the orange, still a warm color, but it's not, it's not orange, so it gives it a, a bit of a contrast. So that might be a good spot for down here. Okay. Now we want to fill this in, so I'm going to take this blue-green. This was the color that I was originally using and just kind of do some large um, marks to fill that in so it's not white. Going, making the shapes of my strokes follow the shape of what I'm working on. So that's his armor, his big shoulder armor, like a shield. So I kind of make it in big circular motions. Now he has these little bumps over here. So I'm just gonna hint at them a little bit. Could do half moons. That's a little, that one's a little bold. But I'm just going to hint at them. I might add more in later. We'll see how much time I got. There's a shadow here. So by layering two colors, layering the green and the blue, it's not super dark, but it adds interest and it gives it a little more depth. So that would be a good thing to do here. I could take black, and I will take black here shortly, but um, rather than just making it all black, it's much more interesting to layer these colors. Blue, green, cool colors, put them together, gives the feeling of shadow. 
and he's now his eye is not real defined it's just kind of this weird little rectangle shape and I don't want to lose his nostril which is a very definite shape as is his lip Keep your marks loose, scratchy. Um, keep the shapes going to the shape of the, an of the part of the mouth that you're working on. Now this is where I screwed up before. I wanna make sure I get this big enough. Because this is, guy was well fed. His name was either Taj or Glenn. There were two. Those were the two names. I could not tell them apart. Uh, there was no, no way to, to know. The way the shadows go here reminds me a little of like the Joker. It's kind of scary. Okay, now let's take the purple. And uh, that's not where I want that. Um, let's get some purple in for, okay, we're still going darker on the shadows, but we're not going black yet. Okay, this is that shield that hangs under his neck right here. And I'm cross hatching this with the blue just a little bit, but not going too heavy because I do want to go back in and put more color there. Okay. Uh, okay, this part of his ear is darker, but this is pretty dark. And this is a super dark. Now I could do black up there and may add a little bit, but I think a little bit of purple with the orange is actually more interesting. Again, watch, watch the motions of your crayons. Make sure it stays um, where you want it to go. That actually went out, of, went out a little bit because I was watching you instead of that. So don't worry about it. It still makes... Still makes an interesting picture. A little bit of a darkening here. Again, because I'm layering it, um, it comes out looking darker, but not boring black, right? I mean, black's not necessarily boring, but if you just did black, sometimes that can be kind of dull. We need to get this darker and more solid. Now these parts here, that's the shadows under the shield, you do make the lines a little closer, but you can also um, be, be plenty loose because your eye will fill in what, what isn't being seen. I just don't want any white there. There we go. Now kind of change the directions of my strokes so that I can meld those to the shadow under his leg and the shadow around his leg kind of come together. Okay. Let's stick a little purple in this part of the eye where it's getting darker. Step back, take a look. It's coming along pretty good. Um, let's do black. I already did, did I do the, oh, I didn't do the dark blue. There we go. Still more interesting than black. This is actually called outer space. It's a really dark navy. So if you get a fancier um, set of crayons, you can come up with that color. It looks black probably to you on the camera. It's actually a really deep blue. Again, still more interesting than black. Ironically, I wear a lot of black clothes, but you listen to me talk about black when I'm painting and I'm rather disparaging. I was taught in watercolor to, oh, we forgot this shadow. That's what's wrong. 
See the shape of that shadow? Looks kind of like the end of a tree trunk. I missed it. Now his ear makes a lot more sense. I was taught in watercolor to try to avoid black, and I still do. <laughs> it, it stuck. That was 30 years ago, and I still do it. Okay, now when we go down in here, we're going to use some of this dark blue to darken some of these shadows to give them definition, but we're going to be really careful not to get too dark. Okay, by light, doing a lighter wave of pressure, I can get some of this colored in, but not too dark. Because this is the part that comes, it's, these are just folds. I need to try to make my darks go in a little bit more of connecting lines so you can see where I'm headed with that. There, that's better. Yeah. Rather than drawing lines, I'm doing little fat scribbles that kind of make a line your eye fills in the other part. It's just a style. I mean, you could do lines if you preferred. Um, because this looks very almost black, I'm using it to kind of fill in some of the spots that Need, need, we need this shading to kind of give it a feeling of shape. You don't have to draw every line. You just need to get some of those shadows in there. Sorry. Okay. Now I'm going to start. I got five minutes. Okay, let's take the black and let's, let's go ahead and put the black in a few places. Just enough to read as, as the direction I want the eye to go. Fill in the really dark shadows. A little bit there. There's no light getting down in there. No light getting in his ear. I'm pressing pretty hard, but I'm making sure I keep that black off to the side. Yeah, this is already pretty dark. That's pretty good. His eye looks like it needs a little definition. Let's see, let's take the purple. He looks a little like he didn't get enough sleep, so let's put a little purple underneath his eye. And I don't like that color there, so... There we go. That looks more like his eye. Mm -hmm. This actually should be a little more down like that. So I'm going to take the orange. Got four minutes to fix this. Move my brighter shadow down a little bit and take, well, let's take the purple. Because the purple shows some warmth. It has a touch of red in it. So it, it will look like there's a bit of um, light on it. Like that, see how that shadow looks darker there, deeper there and lighter there what we want to do. I'm adding some dark shapes, not super dark, this is purple, but some darker shapes just to give a little bit more feeling to the, sh uh, the jawline and the circles. And I'm keeping my marks really loose and kind of fluffy. Um, again, you watch your, watch your shapes. Okay, we've got three minutes. There's a little bit of a shadow here. Okay, and a little bit of shadow here, but not a lot. Okay, now 
if you real quick switch to um, oh let's take this yellow this is a goldenrod and any place that there's the sun is just really beating down I'm gonna give it some oomph not on the back side of his horn because there's no sun reaching that right his forehead this side of this ear and this side of this ear okay now rhinos have really fuzzy ears so we're gonna take a light pink kind of a bright little girl pink and we're gonna put it along the top right on top of the orange because it will just read as some other color for hitting with light okay and then I can lightly use that same pink just to kind of help um, tie in the colors. I'm just going over spots that are white. I don't want them to be white. Okay. I am trying to keep this mainly in the bright stuff. Any place that would be getting sun. It was late afternoon when I took this picture. We'll say this was Glenn. It was probably Glenn. He looked like the older one. And Glenn is the older one. Taj was the young one. Um, I'm not happy with that. So let's take that darker blue and just kind of there. That part of the year wasn't folding over, but this should be really dark. So I'll go back to the black that shape I got about a minute this is great for decorating your office you can decorate your child's room nursery you can make a jungle party you could do all kinds of animals just using crayons on a rainy day you and the kids could create an entire safari the possibilities are endless A little bit of some more shadowing there. Because there we go. All right. Ah, 28 seconds. Okay, I could futz with this all day long. Make sure I get that nostril in there. He has quite the nose. It's better than the other one. I like it. <laughs> Would you like to see a preview of our next episode? Keep watching. It's coming in just 40 seconds. But first, here are a few things you can do to help me keep the videos coming. Hit the subscribe button below and leave a comment while you're there. Share this video on your social media or share it with a friend. You can go to my website where you'll find more painting tips and you can buy the paintings I've created in these episodes. You can also see my fine art originals that took me way more than 27 minutes to create. Book me as a guest artist for your next gathering or convention. I do live painting demos and paint alongs for groups of every size, either in person or via Zoom. Next time on 27 Minute Artist. When I was a little girl, novelty songs were all over the radio. And one of my favorites was One-Eyed, One-Horned, Flying Purple People Eater. So grab the kids, and we'll capture this friendly creature in our next episode. See you then.